In this module, we're going to discuss policy, create, and install. By the end of this training, you'll be able to create a security policy, add checkpoint best practice rules, and use an inline rule. The initial policy, which we saw in previous module, operates by adding the predefined implied rules to the default filter. These implied rules forbid most communication, yet allow the communication needed for the installation of the security policy. So it means if we have our gateway, after we have reset SIC, we have this initial policy. This initial policy will allow SSH traffic to the gateway, HTTPS traffic to the gateway, SIG traffic, meaning you'll be able to establish SIG with it. But if you would try to ping the gateway, this traffic will be dropped. So initial policy is everything you need to do the initial configuration. For example, SSH to configure an interface or a route or over the web UI and establish SIG. You won't be able to have a proper internet connection, for example, not for the gateway itself, but for your local area network. They won't be able to pass through the gateway to the internet. We know that the gateway holds a policy. The policy components are source, where you're coming from, destination, where you're coming to, the service, if it's FTP, HTTP, and so on. The basic firewall, those services are protocols, such as, as I mentioned, FTP, HTTP, SSH, and, and so on. But if you add additional software blades, the service can be an application, which can be really, really, really cool. And of course, the action. Are, you go are we going to accept this traffic or maybe drop it? Checkpoint recommends uh, best practice. For your firewall you don't have to add those rules but we highly highly recommend that you do the first rule is what we call the management rule this management rule basically says that as long as you're coming from your own computer the admin machine so this is a uh, an object that represents your station and as long as the traffic is the actual gateway that you have on these services, this traffic will be accepted and logged. So you'll know that that happened. Basically, this rule means that only you will be able to manage your gateway on these services. If anyone else would try to access the gateway, it will hit the stealth rule. Stealth rule says that any source coming to the gateway on any service would be dropped and of course logged. Now, this is the second rule. So it means if your traffic is gonna hit the gateway coming from the admin machine, this is rule number one. So it's at the top of the rule base. And in our rule base, we go by first match. So if you're coming from this box, you should be fine. Anyone else would be dropped. Noise rule is any rule that you can create that will either drop or accept certain traffic, but it will be quiet because you're not going to get logs. Logs are precious. You want to know what happened within your organization. So net bias is something that we're going to drop anyway, and I don't want to waste any log on it. So I'm not going to log it. I don't want to waste that storage. Next is what I call the yada 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 traffic. Any traffic the organization will allow or forbid. For example, DNS is something that you want to have. So I'm saying all the, all the DNS from any source to any destination, and of course on DNS services, I'm going to accept. And in my case, I don't want it to log it. If I have a DMZ, I can say that my PCs can access this Linux box over HTTP, accept, and of course keep track. If Linux, however, the machine from the DMZ will try to access my internal network on any service, I'm going to drop it. And finally, I can say that DMZ 
and my, inter my internal network can access any other destination over HTTP, HTTP, HTTP proxy. I can accept it, no problem. In this case, I don't have HTTPS. Maybe all of my services are HTTP, but this is just this use case. Finally, the cleanup rule. The cleanup rule is the last rule in the rule base and is used to drop and log explicitly unmatched traffic. So if we'll see it all together like this, any traffic that I haven't specified will be matched here and will be dropped. So we take no chances. The default is security. As we discussed, the action can be either accept or drop, right? That's the default thing that we know. There's a cool thing called inline layer. Inline layer does something amazing, really. Instead of the action being accept or drop, the action is going to be another set of rules. It's just like when you're playing a game and you've reached the final boss and you think you've won, but then there's another boss and you have to win that boss as well. So we can see in this example how the actions are accept or drop, accept, or accept, accept. But in some cases, there's another layer. Okay. And if you'll expand it like so, this is rule number four. These are the four dot something. So all of these nine rules are part of an inline layer. So if traffic arrives and only if the rule matches this parent rule, only then we'll go ahead and look for matches here. So inline can really, really, really give you better performances because you can just ignore all of these rules and you don't have to go and filter them and look for a match if there's no match on the parent. So it's really cool and really useful. In order to demonstrate it, you will need access to Smart Console and you need to know what your organization needs or what's the limitation you want to have within your office. For this demo, I'm going to access from my admin machine. I'm going to open a smart console connection to my management. And once I have my policy, I'm going to push it to the gateway. In a previous module, we've used PuTTY to open up an SSH session to our gateway. Now, if I'll try to reinitiate it, nothing's going to happen. This traffic is being blocked because my gateway no longer has the initial policy, but it has my own policy, which is going to do any, any drop. So it even drops that precious SSH traffic. So I'm going to go ahead and create my own policy. In order to do that, I need to represent my organization here. How? By creating objects. I'm going to start by creating a host object to represent my admin machine. Host name, the host name itself is really important, but the most important feature here is the actual IP address. So now if I'll go to network objects, I can see the host category. I'm going to create another host to represent my AD server. I can change the color. Maybe blue means servers on my organization. Maybe red means printers. It's up to you. Okay, next I'm going to create networks. Now I'm going to do something that's really, 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 really recommended, and that is to enable NAT through the object itself. Hide behind my A gateway. 
because before I have enabled NAT on the gateway itself, like so. Which would work, but it's not recommended because it doesn't give you visibility or control on which networks are going to be NATed. So I'm going to uncheck it and do it by the book. Now I'm going to create another network object. Now when you do this, it's really important to make sure that you have your topology in front of you. So you'll know what objects you want to have in your organization. Uh, this is not my DMZ, this is going to be just my uh, internal network. Because in this topology, I don't have a DMZ, so I'm good. And again, I'm going to enable NAT. And I've successfully created the objects. Now I need to put them in my policy. Now there's something that just happened that it's a nice safety net, but I prefer to modify it. And that is that by default, when you add a new rule, the source destination and service going to be none, which is good. It's useful, but I rather change it. So I'm going to delete this rule. I'm going to manage and settings. policy settings and I can see the cell the default cell values I'm going to change them to any go back now in order for this to take effect I need to publish the changes this would publish the changes on the management so when I'll create a new rule it's going to use those new settings there you go so this is my management rule And I can drag and drop, it's really nice. Next is the stealth rule. My noise cancellation rule. LDAP traffic, so I'm going to add my management network and my AD server. And finally, my internet connectivity. In my organization, I don't have proxy, so I don't need those. So just HTTP and HTTPS. And I'm good to go. I can go ahead and install this policy. Now if I'll open the putty and I'll try to restart it. Now it works because now my IP address is here. So I'm allowed, I'm allowed to HTTPS, SSH or ICMP my gateway. But if anyone else would try to do that, they will fail and it will be dropped on the stealth rule. Next, I want to create an inline rule. So to do that, let's say I have a DMZ network. I'm going to create a rule that will specifically allow traffic to DMZ. I'm going to place this rule here.
So as long as the source is DMZ network, the action is not going to be accept or drop. It's going to be an inline. I can select which blades will be enabled, but for now we're staying with firewall. The cleanup is going to remain any any drop, but I'm going to enable the logs. But I'm going to create this next rule. So if the source is DMZ to any of my internal networks, we're going to drop it because I don't want my DMZ network to access those internal networks directly, so I'm going to drop it. However, if DMZ is accessing anything else like the internet, this is allowed. I'm okay with that. Anything else will be dropped. Okay, even though in this case, 6.2 and 6.3, I don't see anything. You know what? I'll make it more secure. Not secure, but maybe more visible. So I'll know exactly what's going on. So if, for example, if someone from, D, from DMZ would try to FTP or SSH, my gateway, my management, it's going to drop it. Actually, not my gateway because I have the stealth, but it will protect my management. And now I have an inline rule as well. I'm going to install this policy. And we're done. We have a security policy with rules, best practice ones, and an inline layer. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.